Well, praise the Lord, saints. This is Minister Paul, a watchman on the wall uh, for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the Redeemer. It's 1220 in the year 2016, a Saturday at 1212 a.m. It's exactly 12, 12 a.m. I'm out in my backyard. And, uh, and I'll explain in a minute. I just wanted to show you the moon. Not much I can pick up on my, my cell phone here. But that's not really the purpose while I'm out here. Uh, just showing you some different you know, objects in the sky. Look at that. God's creation. <clears throat> what you can't see is this big ring around it. Because the, you know, it's just a cell phone. The quality isn't good enough to, to capture that. But there's this big white ring around it. I mean, it's literally huge. And it's an amazing sight. And, um, look in the eastern sky. Just kind of, a uh, cloudy. More cloudy than normal. But I'm out here for a reason. That's the eastern sky, it's pretty cloudy. The northern sky. And over here in the western sky, there's like a one bright planet or star up there. I'm not sure which. Um, you know, I haven't been out, actually haven't been up this late in a while, let alone out in my backyard been at least six months or more um, you know some amazing events occurred in my life today and I as I tried to explain them to my family and friends it seems like I, I just I couldn't share it enough and enough detail for them to understand it at the level that I understood it and you know it became frustrating and uh, I think I could have handled the uh, could have you know looking back on how I kind of just tossed it on certain family members in my life the events that I'll explain here in a minute. Um, uh, you know, after a lot of prayer, I think I could have handled it a lot differently. You know, the way I explained it and presented it to them. And, uh, man, I'm sure I'm seeing a lot of things in the sky, like lights. The Lord told me to come out here, you know. And so, I'll, I'll explain, you know, to the to people on the internet, kind of what happened. So the Lord has been doing some amazing things, and I always give Him all the praise and all the glory and all the honor. You know, to to actually been giving gifts and calling. From a living God that prove he exists and he is real and then you know to receive testimonies that that people have found Jesus Christ through you know YouTube videos is astounding and I don't think I mention this often enough but I get these types of emails daily how Jesus Christ touched someone's life through me simply coming on here and making a YouTube video. 
every day. But you know, the, the things that we're seeing are growing more and more intense in nature. And this is what's driven me out into my backyard tonight. Um, we all know, just to bring people up to speed, that, you know, the Lord showed me an exact area in Ankara, Turkey, that would receive destruction. And... I don't know if it was two days later or something like that. The exact area, right down to the block, did receive destruction. An explosion killed three dozen people and injured almost 200 in the exact block that I showed on a YouTube video. And, and outside of a living God, it's simply impossible. An atheist cannot use logic or reasoning to show this and God is doing it again and again through many many people to show that he's real and that he keeps his word in his Bible that a lot of people don't like to read and I'm not here to judge you on that it says that he will reveal things first before he does them and what he's doing is keeping his word he has to keep his word. He, he can never lie like humans do. He's perfect and holy and should be honored as such. And, uh, man, I feel the anointing out here. Let me do this more often, amen. And then, you know, my wife, she had a dream about an airplane that was hit with uh, a missile and was crashing I don't know how many if this was a month or two ago I've lost track of time and two or three days later a Russian commercial jet was shot down and it turns out that it was shot down by Turkey exactly how she described it in her dream because God gave her the dream just like it says in his Bible in Acts 2 and Joel 2 because God's not dead and he doesn't change and he continues to show us things and now just today uh, uh, for some reason an, Alaska, uh, an Alaskan airliner flew directly over my house and I was able to record it using FlightAware in a screencasting program. And I pointed out some things in the video about the, the speed of it, the direction of it, the altitude of it, and that it was descending and landing. And then within three or four hours, another plane, a commercial plane, crashed with the exact details given from what God showed me today. I mean, it was going at 4,000 kilometers. I mentioned the number four and said, pay attention to this number four. I said it was descending and landing, and, and then it was descending and landing. I mentioned that the flight I saw was traveling at 237 uh, miles per hour and landing and descending and it turns out this flight left at 2237 hours from Dubai to Russia and people perished 61 or 62 people I'm not sure perished and here's the thing it was a fulfillment of yet another prophetic dream the prophetic dream that my wife had received was that she saw two jets an American airline uh, an Alaskan airliner and a second jet so God shows me the Alaskan airliner but she never said what happened to the second jet that second jet is the one that crashed so moving on to bigger issues here 
Now the Lord is showing me that both of the planes that he revealed through these dreams and visions that we've had just this year alone were surrounding Russia. And that there's a deeper message to that that I'm missing and not sharing. And so I told people that because it became overwhelming, I, be, I got on overload status to actually see three times in a period of two weeks something revealed to me that there's no way I could know a revelation, knowledge, and wisdom from God through my wife or I three times in a period of two weeks were shown something and it comes to pass. This would overwhelm anybody. And the hardest part is not being able to explain it in a proper fashion, especially to my own family, let alone to the internet, and two, to know why. Like I was upset on, on my Facebook tonight. I said, okay, so 61 people perished. Did anyone pray? Because I'm trying to fathom in my mind, why do I see these things? Is this part of the gifts and callings that we can operate in? According to Ephesians 4 and, and uh, 1 Corinthians 12. Well, I'm simply operating in my calling. But what I have, I think I'll walk a little bit out here. But what I haven't been doing, let's call this a late night chat. What I haven't been doing is praying as much as I ought to. Now, I could go on and on quoting scriptures about how important it is to pray. Men ought always to pray and faint not. Lord Jesus, teach us to pray. In this manner shall ye pray. The fervent, effective prayers of a righteous man availeth much. Uh, praying always with all manner of supplication. It's part of the armor of God. But see, just knowing the word of God isn't enough. The Bible says we have to be doers of the word. Not just hearers only. So the Lord corrected me tonight. And that's why I'm awake tonight sharing it with you. that I haven't been praying enough. And so, I guess my message is, he woke me up, got me out of bed, and he said, I want you to go out in the backyard and look up. And I went out and looked up, and the first thing I saw was the moon. And the ring around the moon. Which is clearing up now. And I began to understand that the message that people need to pray more wasn't just for me. It's for all of us. Honestly, and let's be honest, how many people prayed for airlines were in danger when I said airlines are in danger? My house... My family failed in the, the amount of time we could have spent in prayer. How about you? Did you fervently pray that people would be protected while they're in planes? Now, you don't have to answer to me. I'm just being real. I'm out here with the real night chat. But see, God corrects us because he loves us. He doesn't correct us to condemn us. So if he's got me out here in my backyard watching and praying and showing me things about North Korea and Russia and having me read prophecy about the destruction of Babylon and a, a judgment of America, then we seriously need to come together and pray. I just looked down and I saw 1444 on my Android phone, 1444. And so I guess the lesson I've learned from this is that 
You could have the greatest calling and anointing in your life. You could, you could have three visions or three dreams in two weeks that come true. And you could, should have shared it with the world to prove it. You could have traveled all around the United States in a plane and visited seven states for Jesus Matters, laid hands on people, mailed out anointing oil, saw people filled with the Holy Spirit, baptized people. And at the end of the day, when you lay down and your head hits the pillow and you look up, what really matters is is your name written in the book of life? Do you have an assurance? Do you have an assurance in your heart? And this was my prayer tonight. Do you have an assurance in your heart that if you stood before Jesus right now, he could come in the sky right now. Look, he could come. <laughs> if he was to come in the sky right now, would he say that he knew you? And so I started asking myself, well, Lord, I want to speak to your people. I love them and I love you. How do we know if you know us or not? If you're going to, we don't want to be one of those people that say, depart from me. I never knew you. Well, we know when our name is written in the book of life. And that's by faith. We walk by faith and not by sight. And I really feel in my heart that I'm out here tonight for a reason. That Jesus is coming. And he's given us all these warnings. And the, the urgent message he's given me tonight is the church isn't praying enough. We could do so much more for him. We could have so much greater anointing on our life. We could understand the gifts and our calling on our life so much more. For instance, knowing that these visions and dreams and recent revelations are not just about planes crashing and people dying, but about a world war starting between Russia and the United States, in Syria and Turkey and Israel. We could see the bigger picture we could have more faith. We could have a closer walk with Jesus. And we could all know when we lay down at night that we lived a life pleasing to God. We could do all that by increasing our prayer life. When we increase our prayer life, we draw closer to Jesus. And so I'm calling everybody together and saying, can we pray more? Because Jesus is at the door. Can we pray more? It's not about dreams and visions and whether they come to pass or not. That's all good. But those, those are just works. What really matters is, is your name in the book of life? Because we're running out of time. And you know how you get that? Well, you get that through prayer too. You pray to Jesus. You see the importance of prayer? You can get so involved in a ministry that you're doing more ministry than praying. And these may just seem like simple basics to some people. But are you bearing witness with this? That this is, this is true. This is ringing true in your life. Well, I am, and I pray that I've said something that bears witness with you, that we're not praying enough, that Jesus is coming in the sky for us, and he wants you praying. When he comes, he wants to find you praying. He wants to find you walking in faith. He wants to have a relationship with you. 
And so while you're out here and you're doing your you're doing your uh, your ministry with others, make sure that you keep close to Jesus. And make sure that you share everything with Him. Make sure that you're honest with Him. And make sure that your life pleases Him. Because one day we'll all stand before Him. And none of this that we've done down here will have any bearing on what's up there. We'll have eternal life. If He allows us in, if He says, enter in, enter in, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Enter in. It'll all been worth it. And all that takes, all he requires of you, is to have your name written in the book of life. That's it. I saw this huge scroll before I came out here in closing. God said, I want you to go out in the backyard. I want to show you something. And I saw this big scroll, and it had all these names written in it. Is your name in it? Are you sure? If you're not, it's as simple as a prayer away. I pray this blesses you. I'm not sure when I'll upload this. It won't be tonight. It may not be tomorrow. But I know I said all this for a reason. And so whenever this uploads and you see this, simply pray. Shalom.